Hi everybody, we are going to study about the visualization of uh, image formation in thin lenses. So here we have a convex lens with a convex either side, biconvex lens we call it as. So if you look at it in 3D view, right, it would be something like a flying saucer type or otherwise uh, in the game of discus throw, they use a disc which is bulged out like that. You know? Otherwise, a frisbee disc which is bulged out either side. Or rather, uh, if you are familiar with South Indian food, uh, one breakfast which is very famous is idli. It would look like idli. Of course, it's a transparent one. That's what we are looking at. So that's a 3D view. But when you look at 2D projection, it would look like this. And this is the radius. This is one radius. And this is another radius. We are assuming these two radii are equal. This is called radius of curvature. You imagine a spherical surface with extended part of it and all that. So here we have shown radius of curvature. We can change the radius of curvature. Make it bulged out when you reduce the radius of curvature. When the radius of curvature is increased, it becomes more and more flatter. Okay. It becomes flat. It spreads out like this. More radius of curvature meaning it spreads out like this. Lesser radius of curvature meaning it will get contract. So this is one parameter we can change. Another parameter is the refractive index. You can increase the refractive index, decrease the refractive index. Least that you can have is 1.2 here in simulator and you can increase the refractive index up to 1.8. So you can change the refractive index over here. And apart from that, you have this diameter, diameter of the aperture. So when you have this uh, lens like this, right, you have this uh, edge, which is circular, edge of the lens that you have here. For that circular uh, region, the diameter is called uh, diameter of aperture, which can be decreased or increased. So when you change the diameter of this edge, you know, that is not going to change the curvature here. Curvature is different from the diameter of the edge there. So radius of curvature, inductive refraction and diameter. These are the three parameters that we will be focusing on. And then we have this line which is horizontal, right, symmetric to the lens. We call it as a principal axis or otherwise optical axis. This is called line of symmetry otherwise. So on this line of symmetry, there will be two points called focal points. So if the object is at infinity, image will be formed at primary focal point. When the object is at secondary focal point, image will be formed at infinity. So these are the two focal points we study about. So for a lens, there will be two focal points which are equally separated from the lens, either side of the lens. And uh, there is a lens makers formula, 1 by f equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. It's a very standard formula that you would be knowing. Using that lens makers formula and assuming that the thickness of the lens is negligible, for a thin lens, that formula is valid, so you can find focal length. Now, let's look at how the focal length changes, how the focal points move as I change uh, radius of curvature. When I increase the radius of curvature, focal length increases. When I decrease the radius of curvature, focal length decreases. So that is one thing that you need to have intuitively. More the radius of curvature, more focal length. Lesser the radius of curvature, lesser focal length. So, more the radius of curvature, meaning it becomes flatter. Flatter it is, more radius of curvature, focal lens will go away. So, when the radius of curvature decreases, it becomes bulging, bulging out, then the focal length will decrease. So, that is one parameter. So, it is a positive correlation. More radius of curvature, more focal length. Less radius of curvature, lesser focal length. Meaning, the correlation between focal length and radius of curvature is positive both move in the same direction but if you go for an index of refraction refractive index you increase the radar refractive index you see that focal length is decreasing it's reverse order when you decrease the refractive index you see that the focal length is increasing so that's a negative correlation you have here if one increases other decreases when refractive index increases refractive index increases focal length decreases and vice versa so, with refractive index, focal length has got a negative correlation. And what about diameter? When the diameter of the lens increases or decreases, you see that the focal length doesn't change. That's very important. There, there is no correlation between 
focal length and diameter of aperture of the lens assuming thin lens approximation is still valid so diameter of aperture does not change the focal length it only changes the area through which the light enters so more aperture meaning more area enters into more light energy enters into the uh, lens region lesser aperture you have lesser number of rays pass through it that's all that's the only thing otherwise it has no effect on focal length that's one important point so next uh, let us look at the object consider a table lamp which is treated as a point object because size of the lamp is assumed to be negligible compared to the focal lens and the diameter of aperture of the lens and then when you switch it on and allow the light rays to go you see that the rays go in all directions so many rays will start and then they start going in a different different direction some of the rays will pass through the lens and they bend and then you see that they are getting intersected over here so the rays which are going like this they are converging towards the principal axis that converging so lens is called converging lens because the light rays are coming closer to each other so it forms a real image over here uh, there are other rays which are not required for our analysis now because they are not passing through the lens let's focus on the only those rays which are passing through the lens in that also there will be infinite number of rays which pass through the lens because ideally thickness of the ray is infinite, uh, infinitesimally small and it carries almost negligible energy just having three rays intersecting you can't detect the image no device that is being devised so far will be able to uh, detect that kind of image obviously you have large huge number of light rays which pass through the lens and intersecting at that point of image that's why you can have that finite brightness there but for the visualization sake you don't need all the rays to find the point of intersection usually three rays we take in fact you can have even two rays also to find the image two rays are enough to find the point of intersection location of the point of intersection so usually we take three rays these three rays are called principal rays these three rays if you observe carefully they either pass through focus or they pass through uh, center so you say the upper ray is going through focus the lower ray is also going through the focus the middle ray will pass through the center of the lens so these rays these three rays are generally very important in ray tracing i think even in the lower classes you would have studied about ray tracing so these rays are called uh, principal rays the rays will either pass through focal points or they pass through uh, center of the lens okay so now these rays are uh, intersecting at this point forming the image in fact there are so many rays of course all right um now what happens let's say i increase the radius of curvature what will happen to the focal length focal length will increase and image length is also increasing image is also going farther and farther because image will be in multiples of focal length when focal length increases uh, uh, the image distance also will increase okay when radius of curvature increases focal length increases when focal length increases image which is a factor of um, image length image distance which is a factor of focal length will also increase so you have a positive correlation more the radius of curvature more focal length more is the image distance what about the refractive index when you increase the refractive index focal length decreases when focal length decreases image distance will decrease so that is another thing you have it how about the diameter of aperture you increase the diameter of aperture uh, decrease the diameter of aperture focal length doesn't change it only affects the number of rays passing through the lens you see more rays will pass through the lens giving more brightness to the image so the diameter of aperture will only affect the brightness of the image because more number of rays will go through it if you have a bigger diameter that's the only thing but the location of image is not affected by the diameter of the lens so that is another point that you have to focus on now let us come back to this principal rays only and uh, let's look at the screen all right whether you have the screen or you don't have the screen doesn't matter this image is formed and this image is called real image and you can see that image so students might have this confusion that to see the real image you must have the screen that's not necessary whether you have the screen or you don't have the screen real image is formed and if you have a 
uh, eye, your your eye, if you are located in the field of view somewhere here, these rays will hit your eye. You can see them. But if you are somewhere standing here, you will not be able to see because the rays are not reaching you. So for that reason, we use screen. Screen is uh, to increase the field of view. That's all. All right. When you keep the screen exactly at the point of uh, intersection, image is formed on the screen. The light is reaching the screen. They get diffused reflection in all directions. Because of the diffuse reflection in all directions, so the person sitting in, in anywhere in the room will be able to see that bright spot. Okay, so that's the only idea. Anyway, so let's keep the screen aside. Now, focus on some other point, probably extended objects. Let us consider maybe we'll take a penguin. Interesting picture, of course, it's not a real penguin, picture of a penguin. So we want to understand how the image and object are located and their nature also now we see. So I'm taking an object, okay. Um, should I reduce the refractive index so that focal length will be more? Yeah, let's make it like this. Increase the radius of curvature also so that focal length will be still increased. Okay, but again, it should not go beyond it. Let's have it this way. So now you see this is object and this is an image. And you see that it is a real image because the rays are really intersecting there, that emerging rays. This is a real image. And you see that real object and real image will be on the either side of the lens. They don't be, they don't lie on the same side. If both of them are lying on the same side, then it must be a situation where you have object is real, image is virtual, or object is virtual, image is real. Both cannot be of same nature if they are on the same side of the lens. That's one important aspect. <clears throat> now you also see that the image is um, inverted with respect to the object. Object is upright whereas image is down like this, reverse. So they are uh, inverted with respect to each other. We say that. So magnification, they say transverse magnification is negative here. And uh, you also look at the movement of the image. If I move the object towards right and you see that image is also moving towards right. Forget about the size for the time being. Focus on the movement along the axis. So when the object moves towards right, image moves towards right. When the object moves towards left, image moves towards left. So this is one important point. Object and image, both of them will go in the same direction. When the object goes along positive x-axis, image also goes along positive x-axis. When the object moves along negative x-axis, image also will move along negative x-axis. I'm assuming x to be principal axis here. <coughs> so that is one important aspect. <coughs> so object and image will move in the same direction. Velocity of image and velocity of object will be in the same direction. That's one aspect. The other one is, at any moment, look at the object and image. Whichever is closer to the lens, whichever is closer to the lens, that will be having lesser size. Now you see in this case, image is closer to the lens. And so image size will be lesser. And maybe you can have another situation where object is closer to the lens. When object is closer to the lens, you see that object size is less, image is large. We say it's a magnified image. So whichever is farther from the lens will have the bigger size. Object closer to the lens will have lesser object size. Image closer to lens will have lesser image size. So that is one thing. Whichever is closer to the lens will have the uh, lesser size. If you have a situation where both of them are at the same distance from the lens, okay, object is at a distance and image also at the same distance on either side, then the size of the object and size of the image will be equal. Then uh, that particular point are called 2F points. If you can actually numerically try this, you will see that when object distance is 2F from left side, on the left side, image distance will be 2f on the right side and at that moment size of the object and size of the image will be equal to each other and inverted. So we say transverse magnification is minus 1. That minus indicate that it is inverted, inverted image with respect to the object. So that is uh, one more thing. And the third thing that you need to focus on is about the movement uh, in um, um, beyond focus. Okay, once it goes um, between focus and convex lens, right? between focus and the center, you see that virtual image is formed. All right, virtual image will be formed over here. 
so whenever the object is between focus and the center of center of the lens the image formed would be virtual all right how do you know it is virtual because the imaging data on the right side but the image is on the left side if you keep your eye here you feel that the rays are light rays are coming from the image which is on the other side of the lens if you go there and observe there is nothing else here it's virtual you got to capture the emerging rays to see the virtual image here so virtual image will be formed on the same side of the object here you see that object and image are on the same side when whenever you have a real object and real image right they will be on either side virtual object virtual real image and real object or virtual object real image both of them will be on the same side so that's one more important aspect another thing is you see here virtual object is big because it is farther from the lens and also it is erect upright we say both are in the same direction meaning magnification will be positive here so closer you move it towards right image also will move towards right when the ob object uh, goes towards left and the image will also go towards left here both of them will move in the same direction but whenever the object is between focus and center you see that the image will be formed virtual and it is erect and it's also magnified one so that's another uh, important aspect another thing is fourth thing that you need to focus is look at the brightness of the image so when it is closer and closer you will see that the brightness would be larger for the image as it goes away as it goes away from the lens you saw that the size of the image will be increasing as the size increases brightness will keep decreasing it will become lesser and less brightness because the same amount of light will have to spread out into a larger area giving lesser intensity of light lesser intensity of light many lesser brightness bring it closer you see that image has to be having a bigger a better brightness here so so that's one more thing and you see here in virtual image you can see it pretty well so when it is very close you will have good brightness as it goes away brightness will be decreasing there so that is another important aspect here larger area meaning lesser brightness larger area meaning lesser brightness larger distance gives you larger area larger area meaning in same amount of light energy will have to spread in bigger area so the intensity will decrease giving a lesser brightness so that is the fourth point that you need to focus on the fifth point that i would like to discuss here is um movement perpendicular to axis movement perpendicular to axis so if you observe the movement perpendicular to axis it would look like a movement of a seesaw if you go to a children park there you will have seesaw bar where the object and image or otherwise two kids are sitting on either side of the bar they swing back and forth like this so as if object and image are swinging on a seesaw it looks like that because they are on the si either side of the a uh, sisa they move opposite when the object goes up image goes down when the object goes down image goes up but when the object is between focus and uh, uh, pole right you see that both of them are on the same side of the sisa now if you move them both of them will go in the same direction when object goes up image goes up when object goes up uh, goes down image also goes down like that so they'll have the similar kind of movement it is something like two kids are sitting on the same side of sisa so both of them will go up simultaneously and both of them will go down simultaneously but when they are on the either side of the sisa they have the movement opposite direction so that is the uh, next point that you need to focus on the last one is uh, in this thin lens you look at the light ray which is passing through the center of the lens you know that is going to go straight without any deviation because at the center the lens would look like a glass plate almost like a flat glass plate so through a glass plate deviation would be zero that's a quantitative one we need to focus on we'll discuss about it in a quantitative example so there the deviation of a central ray would be zero that means if you just join the object to the center and extend it and that is where the image will be on that line the image has to be present so for a little more analysis more rays we can take maybe from the feet also we can take the rays and see where they intersect they will be forming at the same location in the same plane only so we can reduce the complexity by reducing the number of rays passing through the lens thereby we will be able to focus on this so uh, that's about the convex lens when we go for concave lens concave lens if you look at it one important aspect otherwise the remaining things will all be same only okay um the rays which are passing through the lens all right 
they bend away from the principal axis their the ray, lens, rays which are going into the lens they bend away from the principal axis we say that the rays are diverging out so whenever the light rays are diverging out okay we say that it is a diverging lens concave lens is a diverging lens because of the divergence these light rays will not intersect on the right side on the emerging side you got to extend them to the left side to make them intersect so it, it is going to give you a virtual image and you see the object wherever you place the object throughout the movement of the object if i take the real object keep it anywhere of course it will be having the same direction of movement when the object moves right side image moves right side as the image comes closer and closer to the lens its size will increase but you would see that it is always virtual throughout the movement it is going to be virtual only so it is never real image a real object cannot produce real image in a concave lens you will always have a virtual image form and virtual image will be formed between focus and the optic center of the lens there and you see that the virtual image for a virtual object will be erect all right and it is diminished image because it is closer to the uh, lens compared to the object all right so these are all the points that you need to visualize i recommend that you go through this particular uh, applet that's available online it's free so if you want to play a little more about it and then practice on it it will definitely help go through this, uh, this simulation uh, polar ad educational uh, um, applets you have it you can go through them and study and practice on your own to get more more uh, intuitive feel about it but these applets will definitely help you not for solving problems but to get you a visualization intuitive feel of what is happening here so with that i'll close here we'll come back to you again with a new video if you have any doubts please put comments down there i'll be very happy to interact with you clearing your doubts thank you